the latest news concerning the Tonga underwater volcanic eruption that happened on Saturday. The geologists believe that it could cool down the southern hemisphere temperatures. If you watch the video before this one, the sound was heard up to the United States, the uh, sonic boom from this uh, eruption, and it gave a 7.4 magnitude earthquake. They have no communications there. It's the island nation of about 105,000 people, and uh, the telephone lines of communications have been cut. The eruptions are still ongoing, and uh, the geologists believe that they could be going on for the next month or so. The last time they had such a huge eruption was about 1100 AD, before that about 200 AD. This last update, experts are saying the eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcano, it's a submarine volcano, on Saturday it erupted, one of the most violent in the Pacific region in decades. The explosion was so loud it could be heard hundreds of kilometers away. It also triggered a tsunami warning in countries in the uh, within the Pacific Ocean coastline and uh, all along from Alaska all the way down to uh, Southern California. The underwater eruption of Honga Tunga Honga Hapai volcano may bring down the mean temperature by half a degree Celsius in the Southern Hemisphere, predict climate scientists. Professor Jim Salinger, who co-authored the study on six significant eruptions over the last century, says that Hunga Tonga eruption has pumped 0.4 tetragrams of sulfur dioxide, SO2, into the stratosphere, the second layer of the atmosphere, which ranges between 10 kilometers to 50 kilometers from the Earth's surface. We know this ash cloud is about 20 kilometers high. This sulfur dioxide will divert some of the sun's radiation away, lowering the temperature of the Earth's surface. We're going to look at the null school uh, to see what the real-time sulfur cloud looks like on the satellite maps. Just bear with me for a few minutes. Now, the uh, sulfur dioxide will divert some of the sun's radiation, lowering the temperature of the Earth's surface. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. The geologist says say that what we'll probably see in the next two months is rather magnificent sunsets of the as a sulfur acid mist solely descends from the stratosphere. And they said, but we also expect cooling in our region, that is the southern hemisphere, to amount to a few tenths of a degree maximum. Zach Haas' father, a climate scientist at the Breakthrough Institute, said that post-eruption SO2 measurements show that it's probably not enough to affect global temperature significantly. That being said, more measurements will be taken and more eruptions are possible. So as more eruptions are possible, obviously more sulfur dioxide and volcanic gases will be emitted. The satellite imagery shows that sulfur dioxide plume, SO2, has reached Australia on Monday. It covered Queensland and reached the border of the Northern Territory. Most research uh, suggests that the eruption impact on the climate would likely be seen in the next few months, given it will take uh, time for these tiny particles to disperse over the Southern Hemisphere. In the meantime, Fiji's government said that the sulfur dioxide concentration in the atmosphere increased overnight, resulting in acidic rainfall in the region. James Rennick, head of School of Geography, Environment and Earth Science at Victoria University in Wellington, observed that Tonga's eruption would have a significant impact locally, but it's not likely to affect the world climate global climate, he said. Sure, it's cutting a bit of sunlight reaching that particular part of the tropics, and what's in the aerosol cloud will spread out in the stratosphere, but that's not going to lead to significant cooler temperatures. In the meantime, researchers have agreed that Tonga's eruption was not as large as Mount Pinatumbo in the Philippines, which injected 20 million tons of SO2 in the stratosphere back in June 1991. Scientists found that the Earth's mean temperature comes down by 0.3 degrees Celsius. 
Several experts analyzed the satellite data and observed that the total SO2 emission from Tonga are roughly 2% of Pinatumbo. But as we said, the eruption is not finished yet. This is on Sputnik by Reshikar Kumar. Let's go to Null School to see the real-time um, gas emissions from this volcano. We are on our map on uh, Null School, and uh, this is our area. This is Australia. This is the North Island of New Zealand. Uh, this is Vanuatu. This is Fiji. And it's just about around here. It should be around here. Uh, but going to the chemistry, this is the air currents. Should we go to ocean? This is ocean. Chemistry. Particulates. Okay. Let's go to our chemistry. And we'll go to the um, SO2. But uh, I don't see I don't see much here. I can't lie to you. I mean, I don't see much here. This is supposed to be real time. Uh, carbon monoxide, no. Carbon dioxide, again, no. Uh, I don't know why it's not showing up here. Uh, we do have a lot in, in Australia, though. Sulfur dioxide, as we can see here. Okay. We have um, in Vanuatu area, Fiji area, but I don't see, it should be around here. Anyway, um, this is still ongoing and uh, we'll have to wait and see what's happening. It could be what uh, they believe is quote unquote the big one that happens about every thousand years. And as we said, this eruption is not yet finished. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.